Hey Biggies, welcome to another Big Eat Blind Taste Test, the episodes in which I throw myself at the mercy of the wider internet and taste beers blind. That means cutting through all the hype, the myths, the bluster, the nonsense that goes behind some of the world's biggest and indeed smallest hypey brands to get to the bottom of which of these beers is best in a blind taste test. Today I'm doing nitro stouts, or as your mate probably calls them, Guinness wannabes. Now, if the wider press are to be believed, Nitro Stouts, Porters, Session Stouts, Porters are having a bit of a moment. Tesco recently said that it's the fastest growing beer category on their shelves right now, with about 35% year-on-year growth, which is pretty incredible, particularly given the state that beer, and indeed craft beer, is in. And also super surprising to me as somebody that works mostly in sort of that beer geek bubble, because these styles they're not particularly well loved. In fact, if you're a beer geek and you fancy a nitro stout, you're probably gonna pick up a Guinness. Guinness seems to get a bit of a free pass. In fact, when Anspach and Hobday, a great brewery in South London, released a nitro porter, it was such big news that we made a whole documentary, both on the history of porter in London, which is where it was invented in the late 1600s, and on their release. In that video, we put it against Guinness and we preferred it. So it's gonna be really interesting to see if that replicates itself in a blind taste test next to 10, 11 or 12 other nitro stouts and porters. So let's talk about what a nitro stout is. So most of the beer that you drink from a can or from draft are dispensed purely with CO2. And CO2, generally, it's super soluble in water. It has loads of lovely big bubbles. It's refreshing. It's, it adds to kind of the crispness and the lightness um, of the beer that it's in. Nitro beers have a bit of nitrogen, between 20 and 30% nitrogen that's pushing it out, or that is trapped in the widget in these cans, yeah, that's a widget can, um, or is packaged sort of layered on top and you have to invert it, which I don't know whether this one, yeah, I think this one you're supposed to invert it, uh, and then put it like that, at least I hope you are, because I've just done that. Um, and that distributes nitrogen, which is much less soluble throughout this, and because it's less soluble, you get these tiny, really tiny little bubbles that create this really smooth, velvety effect. Um, and that was invented by Guinness uh, in the 1950s, and it's pretty much become the rule if you're gonna make a sub 5% porter or stout. So let's get to the test. As always, I've bought these beers. I'm the expert. I know where to get them from and which ones I want to use, but some surprises have been thrown in and I'm not going to know the order in which these are poured. It's also worth noting that I haven't tasted, say, this one for pushing a decade. Didn't even know it came in a can. I've never had Beamish before. Uh, I've never had Black Heart. I've never had Fruge. Um and I've, there's some others in there that I have never tried. So this is a pretty blind test uh, as far as we can go. The other thing to say for all the pedants out there, yes, it's not going to be a proper pour. And I'm going to bear that in mind when I talk about the textures uh, of the beer. Um, it's not quite going to be as it should. I understand that. I understand that's not perfect, but I'm not going to drink 12 pints on camera again. So without further ado, the usual rules. I've got three ways in which I'm going to rate it, all out of 10. We're going to get the aroma, we're going to get the texture and the flavour, uh, and then we're going to get the aftertaste, which is always, always important in beer, to create a score out of 30, from which I will declare the best nitro stout that I can get my hands on uh, in the UK, minus Murphy's. Couldn't get hold of Murphy's. I even went to Luton, which isn't far from where I live. But, you know, Luton. Right, be stout of heart. I'm sorry, let's start. Okay, so my spreadsheet is recording, the beers are poured, we've got three beautiful looking ones and one slightly sorry looking one. Let's start with number one. I mean, all these beers are gonna be the same color, I'm not gonna dwell on that, <clears throat> but it should be black cream, basically. Milk chocolate. Kind of graham crackery, caramelly thing. A Little bit of kind of raisin date thing, that smells really good. Doesn't present any of that on the palate. A little bit thin, a little bit watery. When I say thin, I mean flavor-wise. Zero bitterness, actually. Absolutely zero bitterness. Which is very weird on a stout. There should be real roastiness and a little bit of acidity coming from the dark malts that have been used. So they've used like a Carafa 3 or something to get the color. Or coloring. So they haven't... <clears throat> really gone to town on the actual stout element of that stout or porter. Man, I was really hopeful about that and it's all gone wrong. Um, so aroma eight, great aroma. Palette, I'm gonna give this six on palette. 
and then aftertaste five. That's where it really went wrong. I'd have accepted the palette if there was a bit of bitterness on the finish. Right, this one, not really got a head and not a very tight head at all. I mean, that basically looks like COT. Way more berry notes, but also a yeasty twang. Yeah, doesn't smell brilliant. Ooh, okay. Um, oaky, almost. Oaky tannins, stuck at the back of my throat. No rich fullness from that nitrogen or from the malts. No real bitterness. Kind of miserable attempt, that. Six, five, five for that. So, thin, sulfury, twang. Um, I'll put fidge. Why not? Uh, as always, like 19 is a, uh, sorry, 20 is a really good beer. I'd happily drink that over and over in a bar. Um, <clears throat> so that first one, very, very close to being like, hey, this is a good beer. This one, not so close. Right, this looks more like it. Nice, tight head. Mm. Uh, it's got some nice chocolate, coffee. Yeah, like just, just, uh, just ground coffee, freshly ground coffee. That's the word I'm going for. But also, again, a kind of, I would call it like musty bad real ale twang. That one was sulfury lagery. This is old ale. Okay, so that has got the perfect texture. Really lovely, full, using the extent of the nitrogenation really, really well. But it tastes of nothing. I keep taping, taking sips to try and get something out of it. It's a little bit of burnt toast, that's it. Then Nif flavor, okay. I was expecting all of these beers to be the same, as I always do, but once you put them next to each other and they're blind, there's always so much difference. This one smells of vanilla. So I can only assume this is the milk stout from left hand. It smells like those um, milk bottle sweets, if you remember those as a kid. Or an adult, I'm not judging. Yeah, big, bold, way sweeter, but also way more bitterness than the other three. If you're making a stout, it should not have less bitterness than the milk stout. Milk bottle sweets, caramel, chocolate. Has a really nice body as well. That's probably coming from the, from the use of lactose. It's always tricky when you rate stuff that's slightly out of style because it's very delicious, but is it what people are looking for? So a real mixed bad here. There's only one that I go back to the bar for and that's a milk stout probably, so you'd have to really want it. Okay, round two, we've got another failure of a nitro pour here, but the others are looking very healthy indeed. Let's see what number one has. Hmm, not masses on the nose. Kind of brown bread toastiness. And a little bit of chocolate, but not a huge amount. Wow, okay. Um, lovely body again. But yeah, it's just kind of lacking something. It's just a bit muted and mellow. There's actually quite a lot of acidity, a kind of red berry character, which is very nice, but it's not backed up by any of the robustness, any of the chocolate, coffee, caramel, all that kind of stuff I'd expect and want from a stout. Again, no real bitterness. I guess all of these people, because these are slightly niche, it's a slightly niche style, they're going for as broad as they can make it. Um, and I think that's a real shame because it's not true to style and it's not particularly refreshing as a drink when you've got so much going on. You need that bitterness just to clean it up. Uh, right, number two, very, very white head compared to the other more creamy ones. Mm. Okay, so that's got the same yeasty twang that number three had that had the good body. Must be a particular yeast, Nottingham or something. I sometimes get that off of Nottingham yeast. Very interesting that that has a great body as well. So that yeast, I think, must be presenting, um, you know, really helping with that texture. But it's got a kind of tannic quality. Probably from the malt, because there's real roasty assertiveness there. That's the first time there's been real roastiness to these beers, which absolutely, absolutely should be there in a stout and should still be there a bit in a porter. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we've got the histories of stouts and porters video somewhere here. So musty aroma. But after that goes well. Rich, roasty. Uh, right, so, oh dear. All these beers should have head that lasts a good long while. You can see, you know, what have these been out for? 
seven, eight minutes while, while I was getting back in and getting prepped. Hmm. That, I mean, come on, that's not right. And it smells like treacle. Very, very raisiny. There's loads of like either Special B, which is used in a lot of Belgian doubles, or DRC, which is from Simpsons, Double Roasted Crystal, which is very similar in its character. But no body, no roast, loads of raisin. The palate is bad, the aftertaste is, is uh, sorry, the palate is really bad, and the aftertaste is not great. So that, that's the worst of the lot so far, sadly. Huh. Smells a bit like Coca-Cola. That's unexpected. Coca-Cola, well, maybe licorice. In fact, definitely licorice is probably the right thing. There might be licorice in Coca-Cola, don't know. Very thin. It's like, it's got decent, like, nitrogen, like smoothness, but there's nothing behind it. I'm gonna say this, it could be really rude to the brew, but it tastes like a low alcohol beer. <laughs> so I hope, hopefully this is a surprise. So the aroma, licorice and treacle isn't exactly, I want those as sort of subheadings, not necessarily the, the title of the stout. The palate is, has good sort of nitrogen carbonation body, but it's very thin, could be because it's low alcohol. I'm gonna mark it as if it's a full strength beer, so it's a six, and aftertaste, lacks a bit of bitterness, but, um, I mean, better than that one. So that, that's, a, that's a six as well. I get very low scores in this. Maybe I just don't really like nitro stouts. Okay, so it's the final round. I feel like I haven't even really got stuck into these beers, but uh, it's one of the smaller tastings that I've done. Nitro stouts aren't all that popular, like I say, but maybe they are going to be one day. There's coffee, chocolate, and a slight... creamy, cheesy thing. I'm not quite sure what that is. Like, you know how sometimes like roasted coffee has a really kind of um, earthy, slightly funky smell, bit of that. And actually to be fair, when you roast malt, you can get that kind of, it's like, it's umami basically. That's what it is. Loads of umami kind of aroma. Um, when I toured the Guinness factory and I got to wear, cause they roast their own, their own barley. That's the smell you get. It's almost like, really tangy marmite kind of smell yeah fruity coffee red berries no bitterness maybe nitro i don't know maybe carbon dioxide i mean carbon dioxide has a bite to it so maybe bitterness is muted in nitro or something but smells <clears throat> it's not the best aroma but it's good it's right up there oh, i've put it second best yeah, all of these aromas have been a bit muted. It's worth saying that nitrogen does mute the aroma a little bit because carbon dioxide, you know, the aroma comes from the bubbles popping, bringing it all out uh, into the glass, uh, the volatile compounds, and you can smell them. Nitrogen doesn't burst like that, as you can see, well, at least in this beer and this beer, it stays in the head. So you don't get as much aroma out of these, but you, you will hopefully still get the same amount of flavor as a carbon dioxide beer. So I shouldn't be too surprised by that, but just slightly muted, which is why only one of them's uh, got up to eight. So joint top at 20. Uh, right, number two. Ooh. I'm fairly certain that's the most beautiful beer that we've had poured. Still pristine umami again. We're gonna have to go back to some of the others and check if it's the same sort of umami aroma because I thought it was coming from the yeast. Could be from the roasted malt. But that umami kind of dominates it. There's some coffee-ishy things, but not a lot else. Oh, hallelujah. Loads of bitterness, red berries, lacking a little bit of roast, but I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Decent body, lovely red berry notes, bitterness, proper bitterness. I got sevens across the board. That's our winner so far by one point. Okay, what's happened here? That has absolutely zero head. And as far as I can tell, no carbonation. Oh no, there's a bit of, there are some, uh, some bubbles chasing the glass. <laughs> okay. So this is a trick beer, because that is barrel aged. 
uh, rum, cinnamon, cinnamony raisins, spicy. Big beer. I wonder if this is from my stash. I could try and work it out, but um, see what expensive beer has been sacrificed to throw me off. Woo! Oh my God, massive. Tonka, must be Tonka. It's a Tonka bean stout. Could be Lurvig's Tonka bean stout. Um, yeah, rum and, rum and raisin, Christmassy vibes. So I'm gonna rate this to style. So this is the idea that it should be a nitro stout. Not reflective of what that beer is. That, that's a very good beer. Uh, aroma, uh, way off. Uh, palette, no nitrogenation, meh. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, why am I, why am I doing this? Um, no, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna rate it as an imperial stout. It's well balanced, it's big, it's sticky, loads of body to it. I'd want a bit more bitterness because it is very sweet. Eight, eight, seven as an imperial stout. We'll see who made that later. Final beer. Head's dissipated a little bit. It has been out for a while though, because I was enjoying that. So that's got the umami thing as well. And some nice freshly ground coffee kind of notes. I mean, I'm surprised I can smell anything after the last one. So that's got to be pretty good. Yeah, lovely body to it. Not huge amounts of kind of nitrogen kind of velvetiness, but underneath it, there's still loads of body there. Lots of red berry and fresh coffee. Um, not a huge amount of roastiness, um, but kind of enough. The palate, the actual texture isn't quite right, but the flavor is really, really good. We've ended up with two in the last round, rescuing it uh, so that I actually have some winners uh, to talk about. Okay, so all the beers have been laid out from start to finish. Um, they've been ordered on my spreadsheet from best to worst, and now I'm going to unhide to help me figure out who won. So uh, let's start at the bottom. Uh, and the bottom is Signature, a brewery who makes some great beer and we've, we've rated very well on the channel before. I think this is the first time they've released one. So lots to learn from that, I guess, is the only way of really saying that. Didn't have the body that it needed. That nitrogenation hasn't worked at all. There's also no roast and, uh, oh yeah, I, well I've put a lot of ass of Ranin. Camden style, that's a real surprise. Camden Inc, back you know, a decade ago now, was a great nitro stout and I'm amazed uh, they didn't keep that going, to be honest. It could have, you know, rivaled um, Guinness in London. Guinness, 0.0. .0. Okay, so that was the low alk I tasted. That was a surprise. I didn't know that was going in. Licorice. So that's the one I said smelled like Coca-Cola. I think a lot of people would drink that and not realise it's a low alcohol beer. It definitely doesn't taste quite like Guinness. Because um, it's got that kind of real licorice note. But an impressive bit of technical brewing. Uh, Brewdog Blackheart was not great. What was that one? Coffee, some toast, lovely velvety texture, then no flavour. Right, so, I mean, this beer was built to try and take on Guinness, so they've gone as macro, as bland, as uh, generic as they could, I guess. Loving Nitro, I remember that. It was, it was decent, but it just it just really lacked bitterness um, and had quite a muted aroma. Oh, the Forge, that was number one, that had the yeah crazy big aroma, but just literally nothing to it. Like... I reckon, if it was a proper blind taste test, I was blindfolded and I sniffed that, I'd say it was like an Irish red. It's got caramel flavours, no bitterness, bit of sweetness, no roast, no real nitrogenation to speak of. Just, blech, just meh. Uh, oh, Guinness comes mid-table. Ah, there goes the, the sponsorship contract. Ohara is just above it, the indie, the indie uh, choice, if you don't want to drink Guinness. Um, well, I say it's above it. It's the same score. It's literally the same score. So to some extent, kudos to O'Hara's and to some extent, kudos to Guinness, to be fair. Uh, Left-hand stout. So that was, um, yeah, that was the milk stout because it smells like milk bottle sweets. It smells great. Uh, right, so then we come to, well, the two real winners, one of which is Beamish. This little tall boy here. Um, first time I've ever had Beamish. I am going to grab a proper craft beer channel tasting glass and have a go. Obviously, we've had the surge now, so anything I pour... Have I got another can of Beamish? I'm not sure I do. Um, well, there's a little bit of nitrogen coming out, so the texture's not going to be right. But what did I write here? I said, umami, coffee, decent body, lovely red berry notes, and the only one I remember that had real bitterness to it. That's my kind of stout. It's got 
real bitterness, but not too much. You don't want it to be distracting or anything. You just want to know that there's roasty astringency in there, that hops have gone in, and that that sweetness that you get, both perceived from kind of the, the nitrogen smoothness, but also from the red berry character, the chocolate, to some extent if, it, extent if it's fruity coffee, you want to know that's going to come to an end, because sweet stuff gets rich, gets too much in the end. Drier stuff doesn't. I think that's a nicely made, nicely balanced beer. Yeah. So the other winner, happily, is also the Antipatch uh, and Hob Day London Black. That came straight after this thing, which we'll get into in a sec. That one, I just, I just thought it lacked a bit of, um, a little bit of the body that I'd really want, a little bit of the smoothness, the velvetiness. Otherwise, it was really, really nice. And if it had that real texture to it, and maybe it does if I pulled out a full can, um, that would be an absolutely stunning beer. So I really like these two. I would 100% go back to the bar, even if they were poured like that. But obviously the pour wasn't quite right, so these probably would score higher on draft, as probably would the left hand, the O'Hara's, and the Guinness, all of which I would go back to the bar for in their current state, even with those crappy pours. Let's have a quick word about our actual winner. Me doing the classic untapped of rating the highest alcohol, most ludicrous beer highest. But technically it was a very well-made beer, very well-balanced. What did I get right and what did I get wrong? Plantation rum, tick barrel aged. Tonka bean, tick. So I didn't get the milk bit. I didn't get the coconut. I didn't get the cacao, but I did get the rum and the tonka. And that's a very, 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 very silly beer. So what did we learn from this? Generally, it seems to be that the wannabes don't perform that well. You know, Camden Stout, Brood Black Heart, Forged have not done brilliantly. Uh, small, artisanal, uh, doesn't necessarily win out either. The Lervig is pretty low. Um, the Signature is pretty low, well, very low. So really, if you want to pick up a really good stout, you've got to go for a brewery that's really known for it and puts a lot of love into it. This is their core beer now. Um, or you've got to go to a brewery that has the history, puts the focus on it, um, and puts the technical aspects into it. So Beamish, uh, Beamish and Guinness, and to some extent Lefthand, who have a real heritage in this now. These are tricky things to get right, so go to the breweries that invest in it and have become known for it, because that's where the great nitro stouts are gonna be found. Hey, bro, we need to put an order in for some Beamish? Oh, God. Beamish. Yeah.